Uh, the Secretariat will circulate the questionnaires soliciting views from members on their interests and priorities for work. And uh, also, uh, we as a members of the technical working group, uh, we will be invited to, to pilot test uh, an e-learning course in disaster-related statistics, which is developed uh, by the UNSCAP together with the um, CAP. So uh, uh, let's move to the next session. Before I start the next session, I would like to remind you, uh, remind all of our speakers that uh, you have uh, only five minutes in each. And for members, if you have any questions relating uh, to their presentation, please raise your hand. Uh, after the presentation or write uh, your questions in the chat box. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Ivan Busthomi. Sorry if I pronounced the name correctly. He is from the UNSCAP. So uh, our first speaker will introduce about uh, uh, the Confluence platform for the technical working group. Mr. Bustomi, floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the time that is given to me. Uh, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Ivan Bustomi, and I am the IT consultant for UNESCO. Uh, currently, I'm working on the Confluence Development Project that is going to be used by the technical working group on disaster-related statistics in Asia and the Pacific. So for my presentation, please allow me to share you my screen. Okay, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can yeah. uh, okay. see your screen, yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, today in this session, I'm, I will be talking about the Confluent platform itself. So what is the Confluence platform? So a Confluence platform is a team of space that uh, enables the user to interact with each other. So in this platform, uh, team members can collaborate their projects that they are currently working on with the other team member, as well as, as a place for team member to store and also share their knowledge related to the work that they are working with the other team member. Uh, so this is a dynamic platform. Confluence is a dynamic platform, which means that the content can always be easily updated by everyone, by the team member especially. And it, it has a very easy and intuitive user interface that I believe uh, will make it easy for everyone to contribute to the page. And it is also a, a platform that everyone can contribute their ideas and their knowledge to the platform so that uh, the other team member can also see what uh, the, the new ideas that the team member are suggesting. So how does the Confluence platform currently look like? So this is the initial content that we have at the Confluence platform that is already developed at the moment. So in this page, the page that you are looking is the dashboard. Uh, in this dashboard page, you can see some information about the TWG team meeting itself and then any information related to the things that the team are working. Uh, if we look at the page, there are two main areas of the platform. So uh, the first areas are the main areas that you can see on the right side, which uh, will uh, sh show you the content of any page. And on the left side, you can see the sidebar of the uh, page itself so that uh, this sidebar will enable the user to navigate through pages that are available in the cons conference platform and also any features that are available to the platform itself. So moving on to the features that are available. At the moment, uh, there are several features that are available to the users. Uh, the first one is a dynamic pages feature. So this means that uh, everyone can easily update uh, the page that they have been submitted before at any time uh, with a very intuitive user interface for editing and it is uh, very easy to learn as well so i believe uh, everyone can uh, contribute uh, without uh, much difficulties so the next feature that 
the Confluence also have is the features to share ideas. So user can create new page where they can share their ideas and the other user can also see the page that have been submitted as well. So I think this is a very good uh, feature to share ideas in terms of uh, sharing with the other team member. And then the other team member can also uh, start a discussion by commenting to any page or any uh, any content that have been submitted so that they can uh, share what their thoughts are and any feedbacks that they have on any page. So I think this is a good uh, feature to uh, to interact with each other, especially to uh, give feedback. And the other features that I want to highlight is the resources sharing. So in here, uh, anyone can share any documentation or any resources that they want to store or share with the other team member. This can be done by uh, uploading it to any page that they have uh, submitted so that it can be referred by any user that uh, have access to the page. And the last one or the last feature that I want to highlight in this uh, presentation is the questions uh, features, which means that any uh, team member can ask any question and uh, the other team member can also help to answer that question. So I think this is a good uh, feature as also to uh, interact with each other and then to share or uh, give comment about anything. So moving on uh, to the next slide, uh, where can the platform be accessed at the moment? Uh, it is sitting on the UNESCO Confluence link. I think uh, Maria will show you the link later in the chat box that you can access. So uh, this is the link to the Confluence platform. So at the moment, uh, everyone without the user account can see any content in the platform. But uh, if uh, anyone wanted to uh, contribute or share their ideas or comment or anything, they need to have a user account uh, that will enable them to comment or submit new pages or ideas to the platform. Uh, I think this week the, 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 user, the user account will be uh, shared to, to your email. I think from the previous questionnaire, uh, we will be working on that uh, later on. Uh, yeah, I think that's all from uh, my presentation. If we have some uh, time left, I think uh, let me show you uh, a little bit uh, interactively how it will work. So this is the page that we are uh, looking at the moment. So there, there are some initial content, but this is uh, act as initial content that can be easily updated later on. In here, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a sidebar that uh, the user can access. So they can access any page in here and then put some comment at the bottom of the page. Something like that. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that's basically it, my presentation for uh, this session. Thank you for the time and any feedbacks and suggestions are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Basnami, for introducing uh, the platform, very dynamic platform uh, for the working group members. And uh, thank you very much uh, for finishing your presentation on time. So is there any questions from Mr. Bustami? Uh, yes, Maria. Maria, you are on mute. Yeah. The Confluence platform is a dedicated online workspace that was designed specifically for the TWG for us to manage and collaborate its work efficiently. So please find time after the meeting to visit, register, and explore the platform. And uh, we want it to be an active platform, not only if there's an upcoming meeting, but more so in between meetings. So. So as members of the TWG, I take upon all of you to be active in sharing your views, like if you have any suggested topic for a, for a particular agenda, if you would like to volunteer to present on the topics that you see in the agenda. So there is a section there called blog that uh, works like a message board where you can start a conversation. So we're making this platform as user-friendly and as easy to navigate as possible. And we would also like to get your feedback for us to continuously improve the platform. 
So if we have time later on, uh, Ivan can show us uh, the the site itself. So that's all. That's all, Miss Ariana. Thank you. Your uh, your mic is mute, Ms. Arena. Uh, Ms. Arena, your mic is muted. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Saying is that uh, you can find the link from the chat box, and then once you click the uh, link, you can have access to this uh, uh, platform. So, uh, there is no any questions. I would like to move to the second uh, uh, presenter, Mr. Puji Pujano. So, Puji will uh, present about the regional situational analysis report and the questionnaire. Puji, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair, Ms. Aryuna, and uh, good morning good, and good afternoon, colleagues. I'll be presenting very briefly uh, the regional situational report that we will be preparing uh, for the DWG. Uh, Kunpor, can I have the presentation, please? We'll be sharing the, the screen with you, but essentially um, we already have the decision of the um, uh, statistics committee to establish the technical working group, as, as you all aware. Uh, and uh, the committee has produced a term of reference that uh, special, uh, specify the objective, the function, the ways of working, the priorities, and some new research areas that was identified by the expert group that preceded this technical working group. Now, the situation analysis that we will put together uh, is meant to provide the basis for our group, the technical working group, uh, for coming years. And this is quite important because this marked the transition from the framework building for the last uh, five or six years into a more technical nature of uh, cooperation through the technical working group. And along that way, there are two things that we that we study. The first one is your say about the technical working group itself, which uh, we have uh, posted to you through questionnaires. And shortly, I will be presenting to you what your feedback has been with regard to the objective, the function, the new research areas, and your preference for the meeting frequency. Now. Moving along quickly on the right side, uh, then the next step is for us to put together the country's disaster data. Uh, this we will do it through test studies, uh, interview with some of you who are interested to be interviewed and some survey, uh, try to capture uh, the state of the disaster data in your, in your countries. Yeah? The first one is the enabling environment the policy, uh, the uh, um, institutional arrangements, and things like that. And then the data compilation and processing that you have in your countries. The mechanism for data sharing and cooperation, and also the actual as well as potential use of the disaster data. So that will be the situation analysis that we will put together. Uh, we have the initial draft, but we thought it's better to have this conversation first. And then we'll move on with, with the actual data collection in the coming weeks. Uh, next, please. Now, your feedback to us so far, based on the questionnaire that we passed around before this meeting. The first thing we ask you, what would be, you know, your most preferred objectives of the technical working group? And uh, uh, in, uh, in a very brief, your input has been that uh, almost half of you said that you prefer that this technical working group's objectives uh, for the members to work with one another to help clarify and better define agencies' roles in your countries in relation to the roles of NSOs and NDMOs. So that collectively, uh, you could uh, better contribute to disaster management as well as development planning. So that's uh, most of you is answering this. The second one is that uh, you prefer that the objective of this technical working group 
to put importance on the uh, helping countries to develop or to facilitate multi-sectoral collaborations among agencies to actually produce and exchange disaster-related data. So I sense it's like enough talk, now let's get to work, some sort of thing like that. And the third uh, most preferred objective of the technical working group, according to you, is uh, on data mapping. Ensure this who is producing what data with regard to disasters. These are three uh, top answers that you give us. Next one. With regard to the functions of the technical working group, um, most of you, more than half of you are saying that you would like to see this technical working group to function as a regional space for us to share national experiences, methods, tools, and arrangements, as well as uh, to build a regional position. And then uh, some of you um, prefer to this technical working group to function as a pool of experts uh, to provide the uh, regional level analysis and uh, you know for developing capacities right for for capacity mapping and then uh, the third one uh, to see uh, this technical working group to function as a platform to promote the national coordination in your countries and uh, one of you gave us feedback that uh, there is an importance for this uh, technical working group to leverage uh, regional and global data so that we could improve the way we, we do disaster projection and early warning. There's quite a range, but uh, most of you are, are, are gathering around uh, the function of technical working group as a, a regional sharing space. Next one. When we ask you what kind of new research areas that you would like to gain uh, from this technical working group, uh, we look at the, the blue one is the average. Uh, if you look at that, uh, uh, most of you are answering that you would like to see the integration of the uh, 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 data yeah, from operational and administrative, and administrative data to the uh, national statistical system. Second most favorite for you is uh, you would like to learn more about the disaster expenditure. This is referring to the last conversation last week, uh, last month, that you would like to see this technical working group and your interest is to learn and share actually. And disaster expenditure was one thing that uh, you were interested to, to learn. The third one, in terms of efforts, uh, you are interested to, to gain more knowledge and competence on how to integrate the vulnerable groups uh, data in relation to disasters and then the uh, disaster or uh, data on disaster impacts and then the gender aspect on the of, of the disaster uh, data so these are as you can see on the screen uh, from the left to right uh, that's your um, interest on new research areas this may have implication of what we discuss in the coming uh, weeks and months next one well at least there's one thing that you all agree <laughs> When we ask you how, when do you like to have the meetings, and, and uh, in the last meeting we discussed this, everybody seems to love to have meeting on uh, last Wednesday every month, except uh, Tim Wilcox, our friend friend from UNTRR, who said he preferred to have uh, every two months, and one other person they would like to have meeting as being notified. Now, mind you, this is only for the regular meetings. And as Rika mentioned last time, last time that uh, there will be more activities and smaller meetings uh, in between these regular meetings. I think that's uh, that's generally what it is. In, in brief, I introduced to you the um, the plan or the process to develop a regional situational analysis, and then finally to reflect to you what you told us about what you like to do with the technical working group. Thank you, Maria. Over to you. Thank you, Puji, for introducing the outline of the analysis and the questionnaire. Uh, hope our members uh, got uh, a lot of information and then briefings. So, is there any questions uh, from Mr. Puji Pujano?
So if there is no any questions. Uh, okay, we have a question. Satyo uh, Nugroha, please, floor is yours. Sorry. Um, thank you uh, for giving the time. But actually, this is my first uh, to join in this uh, TWG. And I miss uh, last occasion. But I just want to know, uh, actually, about the participant. I mean, because all I know that uh, this participant should be open. And but uh, right now, only uh, BBS only uh, invited as a what is that? The participant. So how could we share this uh, uh, TWT? I mean, uh, is, it, is it possible for uh, inviting uh, the participant? Thank you. Yeah. Anyone from Secretariat would like to answer the question? Yes, Maria? Yes. Uh... The membership of the TWG is actually open, so we're not confining this uh, TWG to certain. Uh, it's not a closed, uh, not a closed membership. So we can invite, and uh, we can invite, and uh, other people can always register as members. So this will be an open uh, membership. Thank you, Mr. Seti, for your question. Okay, thank you. And then I think we have another question uh, from Nepal, please. Floor is yours. Hello, Namaste from Nepal. Yeah, just one of my queries is that uh, just uh, the uh, National Statistical Office and the Ministry of Home Affairs nominated two persons for the interagency and the expert group IAEG. Is this a technical group? Uh, and uh, this uh, expert group is different part or have the same function? Just the simple query. Thank you. Ricky? Yes. Uh, yes, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Ricky Hansen from SCAP Secretariat. It's very good to see you all online again. And uh, Aryuna, thank you so much for accepting the sharing of this group and sharing of this meeting we all appreciate that and you're doing a great job so far so thank you thank you very much um so to my friend sushil always nice to see you there um let me just say a few words about this global group that uh, sushil is referring to the global group, the IAEG on disaster related statistics, is just in the process of being established. So many of you would have received a letter asking for nominations from your government, including statisticians and disaster experts. And as Puti just explained the background for the for this TWG in Asia Pacific was years theoretical work to develop um, a statistical framework. The TWG has its main purpose to support the actual production of disaster related statistics. The more theoretical work to develop a statistical framework is now the task of the new global group. So the global group is focusing on developing an internationally agreed statistical framework for disaster related statistics. And this regional Asia Pacific group we focus on the actual work to produce disaster related statistics. So I hope this explains the difference. The mm -hmm. global upstream 
normative theoretical work. The idea is to have a global statistical standard. Our regional group focusing on supporting each other in the actual production of, of cluster related statistics. I hope this answers the question. OK, thank you, Ricky. <laughs> Thank you, Maria and then uh, Ricky, for your detailed answers regarding the membership of the technical working group. Is there any question so far? So if there is no question, let me move to the next speaker. Today we have a Sokol Vako, lecturer, Statistical Institute uh, for Asia and the Pacific. And then he will present us uh, about the e-learning course and disaster-related statistics. Floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody from me as well. My name is Sokol Vaka with the Statistical Institute here in uh, Asia and the Pacific. We're located in Tokyo, for those of you uh, who don't know. Uh, and we are a... A subsidiary of SCAP uh, in, in Bangkok and work very closely with Rike and Maria uh, in, in, in all our training activities. I have a couple of quick slides, so if colleagues in Bangkok can quickly post those. Uh, I promise I'll be brief because this topic will come again for us to discuss when we meet each other, uh, I guess, Probably not the last Wednesday in December, but but a little bit before that. I don't know we'll be talking about this when we get there. So um, maybe while the colleagues uh, get get the two slides up, I can briefly introduce a little bit what we're trying to do. Uh, the idea uh, actually came as a result of the hard work that was done for the putting of for the uh, the drafting of the manual itself, and a good next step uh, was to put together an online training in order to ensure broader access and, and, and ease of access for the materials that we have uh, developed. Um, objective of the um, there, there are sound issues. If I may ask colleagues to mute themselves. Thank you. The objective of the training is very much for participants to learn the concepts of disaster related statistics and put them in a position to apply them in their national context. Uh, it is very much based on the manual itself, plus some additional uh, uh, details that have been developed over the past year or so and experiences that have been gained. Uh, the target audience is colleagues in national statistical offices, as well as uh, those working in disaster management. Uh, so it is very much making this a, a team effort uh, to ensure that we have uh, broad capacity building uh, uh, endeavors. I wanted to mention that this is just one area of capacity building. Obviously, there will be other uh, other uh, ways that, that we can work with each other to further improve capacity in countries for the compilation of this information. Uh, there you see the outline of this uh, uh, manual. It very much mirrors the uh, DRSF itself. I'm very happy um, to note that per what Puji presented, uh, risk reduction expenditures, uh, as well as integration are very much a part of the training itself as well. So some of the issues that you have already raised are included in the training as, as we have it. Uh, so this is again a broad broad uh, uh, snapshot of where, where we are. So if we can go to the next slide, please, the last one. Uh, where do we go from, from here? Uh, as has been mentioned, we very much are looking for your feedback and your input to ensure that the course reflects the best practices and the best knowledge uh, out there. So over a couple of weeks, we hope to have the course ready and finalized. Uh, we will need to discuss a little bit about the modalities of the review, but maybe this new platform that our colleague introduced, Confluence, can be used already to, to allow us to collaborate in reviewing, uh, uh, reviewing the material. Uh, our plan is to launch this course during the first quarter of 2021. Uh, it will be first initially done as a facilitated course from, from uh, uh, us as well as colleagues in, in the statistics division. 
And that basically means that uh, there will be regular interactions with folks. There will be webinars that are conducted uh, as well as an exam at the end and certification to, to ensure that, that uh, people have completed the course in, in a good way. Uh, the course will then be open to all uh, and uh, you, uh, you can take it uh, as, as you wish. It is going to be a paced sort of course. And as I mentioned, this is just one of the tools that, that we will use in order to facilitate capacity uh, building in countries. So for the time being, uh, I think uh, you can just sit tight and, and bear with us for the next couple of weeks. We'll reach out to you uh, uh, sometime in, in December to have a more formal plan for you to review the course, provide your, your input, and then hopefully uh, come early 2021 to actually participate in some of these activities and also liaise with colleagues in the various ministries in your country so that they can also become aware of some of the concepts and, and ideas that we have been discussing around disaster-related statistics. Uh, so let me stop there and see if there are any questions or, or further comments. So Chair, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bako, uh, for your presentation on e-learning on uh, disaster-related statistics. So is there any questions uh, from the members to Mr. Bako? Yeah, I have. Uh, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm Selamat Stomo from uh, Indonesia. I would like to have a question to so, who? Subako? Okay, sorry if yeah, I'm mistaken. Uh, my question is uh, on the materials. Uh, whether the material is uh, will be uh, published and distributed to all members of the country and also including to us as a guest. Thank you. Yes. So initially for the review part of this, all members of the technical work, working group will have access to the material to review it and, and provide comments and feedback. Uh, and then after that as well, once the course is finalized and launched into the CAPI learning platform, it will again be available to everybody. It is free of charge. There is no, you know, you can you can access the course as, as you wish. So Two steps to this. The first one is the review. Everybody on the technical working group will have a chance to do, uh, to contribute to the review. And then again, uh, during the launch of the course and from, from then on is just freely available in the United Nations Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific website. And we'll share all this information with you, obviously. Uh, yes. Uh, again, again, sorry. Uh, one more, one more question. Whether the material includes uh, the uh, the yeah. modeling, for example, I mentioned in the questionnaire that uh, we need uh, like uh, early warning system modeling, risk uh, modeling for the disaster. Whether it includes uh, in the material. Thank you. Yes, early warning systems are discussed in there. So I don't know the level of details that will be required. I think we have to be mindful that this is just one component of the broader capacity building, and it is very much grounded on the DRSF itself. But there is, uh, if I remember correctly, some discussion of these early warnings. And again, we are coming at this from the angle of statistics and, and what is the role of early warning systems in, in, in order to facilitate some of this information compilation and then sharing of that, that information. But uh, you will see it uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, in a few weeks time, uh, and then we can go from there. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention my name. My name is Tio from Indonesia also. I uh, got two uh, questions. The one is that because the e-learning is got from the internet, so what about it? is the whole day uh, training or can be uh, separated into a few days? That is first. And the second, I think it is good for us who work for a statistician. We need a certificate something. Do, do you also provide the certificate? Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Setio from, from Indonesia. Uh, the way that we have 
thought about the course is that it will run for about six to eight weeks. Uh, and usually, usually participants have a chance to review the material online by themselves. And then Good. when we schedule the webinars, those are at a certain uh, time. So you will have time on your own when you have free time, when, you, when, when your schedule allows for you to read the material. So it's not a set time. Uh, and uh, if you look at the, the final slide of the presentation, the first round that we will do is a facilitated training. Uh, and as part of that, there will be a certificate at the end for those who successfully complete all the activities of Good. the training. So, uh, when we do a facilitated training here at uh, the at UNC UP, we also provide a certificate for those who successfully complete uh, trainings. I don't know if you have had a chance to take any of our other courses, but it will follow a similar uh, similar structure as far as the certification goes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. May I have a question? Uh, yes. Oh, this is Abdullah Larif from Bangladesh. My question to Mr. Beko is uh, for the facilitated course, uh, will it be possible from their part to uh, inform us so that we can also send some participants? Absolutely. I think we are trying to get as many people as possible. Usually, uh, uh, we send an invitation letter to the statistics office of your country. So I'm, I, I do not sure, Mr. Abdullah, if you are part of the National Statistical Office in Bangladesh or some other office. But obviously, we will send everybody here in the working group an invitation as well. And, uh, and, and again, I want to reiterate that we want to encourage you to get relevant colleagues from other line ministries as well to, to take the course so that they can become aware of the work that, that the group has been doing and also become aware of the uh, framework, the concept, the definitions, and so on and so forth. So absolutely, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll invite uh, as many people as we can. Oh, yes, Mr. Beko, I'm working with Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief, and, you know, uh, so we'd be, uh, we'd love to be part of your uh, e-learning course. Yes, thank you very much. We'll make sure that you get an invitation uh, as well. Thank you. So uh, we are close to uh, ending our session. Yes, Puji. And then after Puji, I uh, would like to take the question from uh, Mr. Wilcox and then Vivian. Yeah, Puji, floor is yours. Thank you, Aruna. Um, in a long run, since uh, English is not really our first language, is there any scope to have this translated into other national languages? So I think, uh, Puji, thank you for raising that point. Uh, it's a question of uh, resources, if I may be completely blunt. Um, if there are resources to have people translate, and I think, you know, maybe uh, we can at, at some later point, especially with the Secretariat, Rick and Maria in particular, think about this. But uh, it's a question of resources. It's technically very easy to do. Courses that we have developed have been translated in other other languages, uh, whether it's, you know, usually we go for official UN languages, but we're very happy to have this translated in any language. Uh, just a question of, again, finding somebody who can do the translation itself. And if there is that person, then we're very happy to collaborate. Uh, that. And also we will be able to host it here at, at CIAP as well. So you would not have to worry about, you know, once it's translated, where do people go to have access to it? It will be, you know, easily available over the internet for anybody who is interested in taking it. But it's again a question of just having somebody translate the material to whatever language we want to translate it in. Uh, uh, thank you, Vako and uh, Vivian. Do you have any question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Vivian Ilarina from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Uh, we are happy about the this uh, training online and uh, would you consider also face-to-face -face training as a follow-up of the online training because i understand that uh, between the online and the face-to-face -face, we recognize that face-to-face -face is more effective so this module are you also considering face-to-face -face training among the member countries or among the technical working group members. Thank you very much. 
Uh, thank you very much, Vivian, and uh, happy to hear from you. I hope everything is okay. Um, so, uh, we, you know, given the circumstances, I think that is a little bit difficult for me to comment on simply because we do not know when uh, travel will be allowed. But as a general practice, what we have done in the past is to look at the online training as setting the foundation, and then uh, the face-to-face -face as being more of hands-on and practical and very much a key component of of our capacity building here at, at CUP as well. So uh, short answer is that yes, in-person training is necessary as a follow-up to continue the conversation and do some of the more intricate hands-on type of work. But unfortunately, given the, the current situation, uh, I, I honestly doubt that we will be able, because usually we like to do online training and then a month or two after, or even sooner to do an in-person training. And if I look at the timeline, that means that we would have to do an in-person training sometime in the first half of next year, which, you know, given the current circumstance, I'm, I'm unfortunately not very optimistic. But hopefully once the, the situation is a little bit under control and we are able to travel, uh, uh, we will be able to do in-person training uh, to build upon the nail knowledge and, and experience. And also, hopefully, some of the experiences that will have been gained up to that point to, to be able to share those among members of the tech, technical working group and, and, and more broadly. So, yes, we do it. It's just a matter of sorting all these other things around. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Those who have questions, please uh, leave in the chat box and then our speakers will uh, answer your questions. I'm very sorry about that. So uh, let me allow to move to the next session. And then uh, I would like to uh, invite Ms. Vasiti Soko for chairing the next session. Ms. Vasiti Soko, floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Ms. Ariana. I think Ms. Vasiti Soko is not around, so I will just ask uh, Mr. Puji Pujiono to moderate on her behalf. If yeah. it's uh, okay with everybody, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Puji, please. Puji, your microphone is mute. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, participants, uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, we'll move to the next uh, segment of, of this uh, meeting with uh, country sharing. In this meeting, there's one single country sharing, that is Indonesia. Uh, part of the uh, background of this is that we have been working as an expert group uh, of disaster related statistics for a couple of years. We have been dealing with the concept and ideas, but uh, I think you agree with me. One of the most instructive way to learn is to look at an example, right? So in that regard, Indonesia has been moving along in putting together disaster related statistical framework. So uh, maybe it's good for us to hear and to see what Indonesia has been doing. And uh, after the presentation by Ms. Hermawanti from uh, National Statistics Office, PPS of Indonesia, then we could have uh, more uh, elaborate question and answer. Ms. Wanti, please. You can uh, unmute your uh, microphone. Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you, Pak Puji. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Aruni. Uh, it is an uh, honor for us, Indonesia, to present the, the work that we already done uh, until today. We have uh, complete the framework for the disaster management. Can, can, can I get the, the presentation, Pak Uji? Yes, it's uh, coming in. Yeah, OK. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, the context of the one we, we call it Indonesia One Disaster Data. That as we know, Indonesia uh, vulnerable for the disaster. That uh, this is only two of the picture, the evidence from Lombok earthquake in August of 2080, and also evidence from the Central Sulawesi earthquake in September 
2018. We have uh, so many uh, uh, occurrences uh, of the disaster in Indonesia. And we, we got the issue that uh, the, we have so many data related to disaster, but there is uh, only little information that we can get, and especially for the uh, implementation and also the the next for the uh, recovery. And we also realize that there is a disconnection about uh, related to the data from the National Statistics Office in in this. Uh, in Indonesia, we call it BPS, and also for the National Disaster Management Agency, BNBB, and also uh, from other uh, minister line that they already also have a lot of data, but our data cannot be talk each other. I, I mean that we don't have the interoperability, well, interoperability, interoperability about the data. This has become a problem, so we get the gap that uh, we found the incorrect discrepancy, disagree, agreement, also conflicting data. And when the disaster happened, there are another uh, minister, another agency also try to, to collect the data. So the, the problem is becoming higher. So we have so many data related to disaster, but uh, we cannot use it uh, in all together. And we also uh, have a problem when we need the disaster emer emergency sort of life. Uh, so this is uh, become an uh, issues in Indonesia. And in Indonesia, there is a lot externality. We have uh, opportunity because our government uh, have commitment that we 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 need we we need to have uh, one data Indonesia Indonesia one data. It consists of all of about uh, data, and we try to make it in a one uh, portal, make it in uh, one reference, one metadata, and the data uh, can be interoperability, uh, one uh, all together. So uh, this has become a uh, opportunities to to develop one Indonesian one Indonesian one disaster data, and also we we know that in a global and regional we also have a momentum SDGs monitoring and reporting and also UNDRR and also UN Escape. So all together uh, we think become uh, one. Uh, system or one one uh, thing, one thought of us to make it all together become one uh, disaster that one disaster data of Indonesia. Next. This is actually uh, the frame that we 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 develop uh, because in Indonesia we have a target for the national medium term development that uh, through environment and disaster resilient reduce economic losses up to 1.2 of the GDP by 2024. Actually, we don't have uh, any tools how to measure it. We still uh, go in a long way to, to measure it. So that's we need the, the, the framework and also the work to, to uh, get the goals. And from this uh, national medium term uh, development plan in the 2020 and the 2024 and also the DRN and climate change target, we think that we need to improve the disaster management so we can have the disaster risk reduction, risk assessment, disaster management and emergency response, and also the rehabilitation and recovery in one uh, frame. So we can get the planning, budgeting, and reporting in, in one framework. So we can work all together, all the nation in one uh, platform. And to, to do this, uh, work 
we need to do the compilation uh, data from uh, all the Indonesian uh, production uh, data, and we need to, to to produce the indicators that also can be related to the international monitoring and reporting, such as SND framework, and also the Paris uh, 2015. So uh, this uh, Indonesia one disaster data will be uh, led by the BNPB, the, the National Disaster Agency, and also uh, will be uh, BPS will be one of the part and also from uh, other line ministry and sectoral and also the local government. Because in Indonesia, we, we uh, we are in an uh, aut autonom autonomous, uh, so every uh, district and every province will be have their own uh, system and the data collection. So we will work all together in the national level, uh, in a, among a ministry and line ministry, and also in a local government. Next. So uh, the Indonesia One Disaster Data will be consisting of the policy, institutional arrangement, and also the technical management of the disaster-related data as a, an integrated part of Indonesian One Data and National Statistical System to ensure that our data is credible, consistent, interoperability, can be interoperability, and also uh, will uh, will can be used used in the internationally comparable and for the one 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 uh, data itself indonesia one data itself we have a uh, four principles three principles that uh, the data should be have the one metadata one code and reference uh, can be interoperability it's other and also uh, uh, have uh, reference and code next Next, this is the policy frameworks that we use enhance the utilization, utilization of data to improve the disaster management as part of the basic right of the citizen. We have the Disaster Management Act number 24 in, the, uh, in 2007. And also uh, we have the Statistic Act uh, this is the, the 16, the number 16 we produced in 1997, and also the local uh, government acts, and also the one data. We have the presidential decree on the Indonesia one data. So all uh, four uh, X, this, this X uh, for this X will, will be become the policy framework for, for the one data for of the uh, disaster. Next. This is the principle that we will uh, use for the one data disaster in Indonesia. The first, the, compre the first is the comprehensive principle. That's the management of disaster data and statistics regarding all matters throughout all phase of the disaster risk management. So as I mentioned before, we have the four uh, step that we need to to be uh, collect or we we produce so it can be uh, related its other and all the fast in the, all the aspect and the phase of the disaster risk management can be included in this uh, one uh, disaster data in Indonesia and also uh, we have the principle of integration integrated. Uh, we will involve all stakeholders, including national and local government, and, and it's national and also international uh, stakeholders. So all of stakeholders on disaster management will uh, can can use this framework, and we 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 uh, use uh, or we we try to fulfill of the requirement of the all stakeholders. And the, the last I already mentioned before, the data should be consistent 
with our uh, ex regarding uh, one data of Indonesia. So we will have one unity of standards, metadata, uh, code and reference, and also the data can be interoperable uh, uh, each other. So every uh, line minister, every agency can use the data easier because we already uh, make it in a uh, unity of standard metadata, code and reference, and also the interoperability. And, and of course, we will be have one portal to put all the data all, get, all together as a, a one portal of the disaster. Uh, and it will be uh, produced or, or maybe a maintenance by the the uh, National Disaster Agency of Indonesia. BPS will be uh, help uh, on the process in, uh, in statistics and line ministry on also the local government will become a, the production of the data and also become the user of the data. Next. This is the basic range that uh, will be included in the framework, will be in, include in the one data disaster. We, we will put the risk statistic. It uh, will be include the hazard exposure, vulnerability, coping capacity, then, and we will uh, put all together the extent of hazard that interact with the socioeconomic characteristic that dynamically determines the chance of disaster induced damage and the losses. And also uh, occurrence statistic. This is related to the characteristics of every hazardous if events that are required to respond and recover from the emergency and to develop the time series statistic for forecasting, prediction, and the planning. It will be include the time of the disaster, time, type, and location, and also the unique identification and also the status. Beside of the two uh, rents, we also have, uh, we, we, we also put the impact statistic into the one data regarding the disaster statistic. It is uh, related to the information regarding damage and losses that directly or indirectly affect the post-disaster evaluation of damage and losses. But uh, we, we still, we, we realized that uh, the data related to the impact uh, is not that easy, but we try to, to make it uh, all together in the, uh, our one disaster statistic data. We also put the expenditure statistic as, as one uh, for the, the the thing that we we need to develop. This is including the monetary valuation of spending and all investment and activity directly to uh, disaster risk management to determine the relationship between expenditure and result and the deliverable. Def deliverable. We realize that the expenditure statistic is still far away, but we we try to make it uh, in uh, our framework. So we try uh, to go on, on it. Even we still don't have any experiences how to uh, develop the expenditure statistic related to the disaster. It is uh, the thing that uh, hard to do. I know, we know about it, but because uh, the disaster management uh, need also uh, the expenditure statistic is uh, one of the the uh, part. So we put it in the, uh, our framework. Next. For the data itself, uh, we have uh, four data sources. The first is the basic statistic. It will be uh, supplied by uh, BPS as the National Statistic Office. It includes the population census, socioeconomic census, village, village potential census, and also we 
already uh, produce the geotagging for the infrastructure in all the uh, part of Indonesia. That then and also for the pop population census in Indonesia, in we just uh, uh, finish the population census in a field in 2020 we we have one uh, improvement for our, our population census because now by now the the data our data in a population is already related to the civil registration so we 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 already have the information related the identity number uh, security number of the every population in Indonesia and for the population uh, fill, fill its potential data we already have the information related the all the infrastructure uh, in all part of Indonesia in every district uh, we we already know the the number of school the number of uh, the number of uh, uh, house Hosting every hosting and also the number of uh, medical center and also the economic activity, economic uh, facility. We we already have the information. Uh, also the geotaging for its uh, information uh, and for the. Uh, socioeconomic census we have the information related to expenditure for the for the uh, individual and also the household and we have the disaster registry from the national uh, disaster management agency including the inaris db db and also the irb and we have a uh, total or local data from the ministry of or agency and also the local data and also the uh, uh, all other institution and as uh, for the in, uh, technology development we also try to use the the new data or big data uh, using the special survey or also data mining to uh, improve the data source that we need to 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 use as you as it's as an information one of the uh, institution in indonesia is already have the information related the the commuter bps also have the information the commuter uh, data using the mpd mpd uh, using the jaded using the uh, handphone so from the provider we can can get the information who uh, people uh, go outside the one area or inside one area so we can have the information related to the the uh, commuter next next this is just the some some uh, ex, uh, example about the data that we collect from from uh, many institutions. This is the institutional arrangement. We have two part uh, information. This is the one uh, from the National Disaster Data Forum. It will be from line ministers and from BPS uh, in a in in uh, Jakarta and also from the National uh, Geospatial Agency and also from the National uh, Disaster Management Agency. And for in the local disaster data forum, we will have the local uh, sectoral from the, gov uh, from the uh, local government and also from the local disaster management. We'll have to to uh, data forum, but all together will be uh, put in a one disaster data, data national in a national portal. Next, the process that we already done some is already uh, done. 
in uh, October, we already have the con consolidation between uh, BNP, BNBPS. And then we in November, we already have the interministerial data mapping. We uh, invite all the line ministry that uh, have the data related to uh, disaster management. And we have the meeting to make uh, uh, data mapping. And there are uh, some uh, local level pilot plan. We, we use the uh, Sulawesi Tengah, Aposo, that uh, they have uh, experienced a disaster on uh, 2019. And we also have the regional exposure in uh, Tokyo, Papuji and our staff in BPS already exposure the, the plan that we make related to the disaster management. And on December, we uh, become uh, host for the Asia Pacific Regional Training, and we can we get the lesson forward for the region. And on December, we also have the meeting between the stakeholder briefing, UNFPA, UN Women, NGOs, and also UN agency uh, make a briefing, and uh, BPS and uh, BNPB also uh, on there. And we try to have intersectoral endorsement in 2020. Next. Next. Next, please. Okay. Uh, this is that uh, I uh, have present about the one uh, disaster data in Indonesia. Thank you uh, for listening me and. Uh, I welcome, welcome for the discussion. I will I give back uh, to my Pak Puji. Thank you, Ibu Wanti. Uh, we call uh, Miss in Indonesia as Ibu Wanti, right? So I guess it, it is like what we said earlier. It's so much easier to see concept and a framework when it breathes life like in Indonesia and how they do it. Uh, as you heard from Ibu Wanti, it's not a done uh, project. It's a work in progress, but I think we could re, we could uh, visualize what happened. Now, we would like to open the floor for a question and answer. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of interest on that. Uh, please raise your hand, and then uh, we start with Pak Slamet from Indonesia. And other colleagues, please uh, click your hand raising so that I could I could uh, you know uh, call you in. Please, uh, Pak Slamet. Okay, thank you, Pak Puji. Uh, I'm glad that uh, BPS 36 uh, Indonesia col collaborate with the BNPB in compiling the one disaster data. Uh, in your presentation, in your presentation, one thing that uh, you mentioned about the what is it expenditure statistics. statistics. Yeah, yes. I think so. It's a difficult one because uh, yeah, you, you, we, we have to understand how to measure the yeah. cost of a disaster. But uh, when I see your presentation that you have a co collaboration with uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics, you maybe uh, uh, ask them to uh, to teach how to measure, okay. for example, the cost of disaster, because yes. the cost of disaster and also maybe it's important for Pa Puji from BNPB, yeah, because uh, cost of the disaster could be a current cost and could could be uh, intangible cost. So uh, maybe you uh, invite some expert from the Australian Bureau of Statistics or from the SIE, uh, SI AP from the Tokyo, yeah, to to explore the the method uh, for for measuring. It. Thank you, Pak Uji. Thank you, Pak Slamet. Uh, before I pass it on to uh, Ibu Wanti, I think we are pleased to note that during the um, uh, regional training in BPS last December, our colleagues from the Philippines, Vivian is there. 
I think they're developing a, a satellite account on disasters. Maybe we could have some word from there later. But I'll pass it on to Ibu Wante. Ibu Wante, if you like to respond, please. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Buji. Pak, selamat. Uh, terima kasih for the uh, advice for us. Uh, and we know that Pak Selamat is one of our experts in uh, national uh, uh, accounting. So. Mm -hmm. I will uh, uh, propose to ABS to uh, help us in producing a satellite account about the disaster. Thank you very much, Pak Selamat, uh, for the advice uh, and also okay. remind me to, to do it, <laughs> to, advise, to ask help from the Tokyo and also the ABS. Terima kasih, Pak Selamat. One of these days, we'll knock at your door, Pak Slamet, and get your best advice on that, yeah? Okay, we have a... Uh... And also from the Philippines, maybe we can okay. have a dialogue, uh, uh, bilateral in Indonesia and Philippines. I, I will uh, yeah. uh, feedback for this, Pak pa, pa, Okay, pa, pa, before I this. on, maybe since uh, Vivian is online, Vivian, do you like to say one word or two about this? If you know, if you know of the project, Vivian, please unmute the, your your mic. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, good afternoon again. Um, oh, during the the project under the UNS Cup on developing the DRSF, we proceeded on developing this. Uh, study on uh, trying to compile statistics to, for the disaster risk reduction expenditure accounts. Mm -hmm. We The intention is to develop this as a satellite accounts to the national accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, number one, uh, it is very challenging to assess all this data data are from different sources, data from the different uh, agencies, and uh, they are not really designed for disaster framework, disaster statistics. So what we did is just to put together all this data and mm -hmm. provide caveats. And uh, uh, the, the intention is really to uh, develop a, a framework using the supply and use to really keep track of this disaster and link them with the national accounts Excellent. expenditure. Yep. But uh, of course, there are challenges. First, uh, uh, data uh, coming from, from, for example, households are not available. Sure. But uh, data coming from the government, like from the commission annual reports, from the commission of audits, are fairly well developed. And uh, this provide initially the inputs to the disaster uh, satellite accounts. Thank it's you. not yet. It's not yet uh, final, of course. Uh, it's work in progress. Done huh? more work yeah. in progress, but we have started them. Sure. Okay. So and they we are right. developing. The, the reason I put it up here because uh, uh, the second most interested topic that you like to learn is about expenditure. So there you go. I just take some more minutes there. I have two more hands. We have uh, Susil. Namaste, Susil. Please uh, ask your question. Namaste. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for Miss Harmawanti for the nice presentation. Uh, I have a few queries about the data sources. Either BPS is uh, developing any application or national data profile to capture the data uh, from the stakeholders or the data provider or using the secondary source of the data. Uh, for the specialty in the disaster sector, either BPS is uh, uh, conducting any special census or surveys. Uh, can you clear this? Thank you. Yeah. If you want to, please respond. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Susil. Namaste. Uh, yes. Actually, uh, BPS re related to the disaster data, we collect some, some information from our survey, but we don't have specific uh, survey from disaster. For example, 
uh, we have the National Socioeconomic uh, Survey. So uh, in this survey, we're asking about the expenditure and some information related to household. And on this survey, we also add some uh, question related to the disaster. For example, uh, about the mitigation of disaster for each uh, a member of the individual on the housing. And also for the village, poten village potential survey, we have the information uh, related to the occurrence of the disaster in its, dis in its uh, village. We're asking to the uh, people and also about the, the mitigation uh, in uh, every village. So, and we also collect the information from the, the second, secondary data from another ministry. So we, we combine all together, but we don't have the specific survey related to disaster, but we put uh, or we, we add some information, ask the information related to disaster in uh, some survey in BPS. Thank you. All right, uh, let, if you want to, thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, there are 20 hands uh, raised now with a lot of questions. Right, but the time is against us because this uh, this periodical meeting is really designed to be very short meetings. Uh, my suggestion is uh, we will tackle the the rest of questions that has not been answered in the uh, cheating. Uh, I mean uh, chat box, and alternately uh, we could offer or we could uh, wait for colleagues to propose specific session in between regular meetings. So that Vivian could present what her trouble and success with uh, with national account, uh, satellite account. I want to continue talking about the the work in progress and and other aspect of what was has been presented. Um, on that, uh, let me bring you back to the the core, uh, the, the starting point, that the, there was a disaster related uh, statistical framework from SCAP that was the template being used in Indonesia. Uh, as a concept, now you see the practice that is being uh, implemented in Indonesia and how it works in real life. With that, I would like to thank uh, Ibu Harmawanti for the presentation, all the uh, colleagues who have raised questions and the one who is pending answers to Vivian also. Uh, I would like to pass on the meeting back to Aryuna, uh, Madam Chair, please. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you for chairing this, uh, the last session. So uh, I think now we are close to the end of the meeting. Uh, before closing the meeting, uh, I would like briefly uh, talk about the frequency of the meeting, working group meeting. And then as Puji mentioned before that, uh, almost all members agreed to hold uh, monthly meetings on last uh, Wednesday of the month. So uh, in that regard, the next meeting will be on Wednesday, 16th of December. So during that meeting, um, we will try to keep the meeting uh, as short as possible. And we are planning to discuss about the results on the response to the questionnaire of the status of production, dissemination, and use of disaster-related statistics. And also, we do have some announcement on uh, the e-learning and then pilot testing issues. So if there is uh, no any questions or comment, uh, before I close this uh, meeting, I would like to thank you all uh, uh, once again for joining us today. And then uh, please uh, stay safe and healthy. And with this, I would like to close the technical working group uh, meeting. See you all on 13th of December. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.